Hi Di, how are you doing today? Very well, well, good morning. Great. So, uh, welcome to this exclusive video series called Lean Learnings brought to you by etcio.com Di. Thank you. Thank you. So, Glad Deep, to be here with you. Pleasure to have you with us. So, Deep, tell us about your current role. Okay. So, that's pretty interesting. Uh, uh, currently, I am the Global President and Chief Revenue Officer for Cloud4C. Cloud4C is a global cloud managed services company. Uh, we Our focus is hybrid cloud, sovereign cloud, and industry cloud. We work across 26 countries, 54 locations about 4,000 customers, and we help customers in their journey to move to cloud, whether you're uh, on-premise, moving from on-premise to cloud, or you want to make your cloud operations more efficient to be truly cloud native and um, you know digitally enabled and help improve your customers and consumer experience, as well as equally important, your employee experience. That's great to know, Deep. So deep in a world where organizations are focusing on excessive data collection and analysis, give us an overview of how the APAC organizations are investing in the security, backup and maintenance of data storage, cloud storage and computing, and also its growing importance. So thank you. Thank you, Rafi. That's a pretty very broad question. I'll try to break it down into two or three different parts. If you look at the you know, if you look at the total technology spend which happens globally, cloud, uh, despite the rapid acceleration, across the world is about 10% of the global technology spend. It is growing the fastest, it's growing almost at a 20% CAGR, but still it's about 10% in, in the rest of the world. Uh, maybe North America is a little higher, uh, but the rest of the world is still about 10%. So that means there's a lot to do in cloud. Now, why should you do in cloud? What should you do in cloud? And how should you do in the cloud? I think those are the key questions. And that is how I'll try and answer some of these things. You're right. You know, uh, we have often heard over, last, uh, over the last decade that data is quadrupling every year, which is true. And what do you make sense of the data? Is it for archival? Is it for intelligence? Is it for insight? Is it for business decisions? And depending upon the company's strategies, you know, how you want to be you know, today, every company, be it a physical or a digital company, wants to be what I call is a digital company, a physical and a digital company, because that's the way to you know, go to your consumer, to your customers, and also to address your employees. And the way I look at it, how cloud adoption is happening is into three parts of it. Number one, it is in the SaaS layer, which is software as a service. Number two is a PaaS layer, which is platform as a service. And number three is infrastructure as a service. So when I talked about the global uh, you know, cloud adoption being 10% of the technology spend, a significant 75% of that spend is happening on platform as a service and infrastructure as a service because they request a lot of modernization to your point about how, how you're going to do your compute, how you're going to do your storage, how you're going to do your data retrieval, how you're going to you know interconnect with various systems across the world or within your organization, with your suppliers, with your customers. Those, that is where the platform play comes in. So I think those are the areas where a maximum amount of focus, uh, spend and things like that are happening. If I look at Asia Pacific alone, again, Asia Pacific is a very broad region. Um, you know, um, you have from very, very advanced and evolved cloud adopters like Australia and Japan to, uh, I would say, you know, a lot of early stage adopters and also uh, many of them are being driven by the policy of data regulation, data sovereignty, data residency, personal data laws. So I would say it is happening in mixed, uh, in mixed bag, somewhere it is happening, more of infrastructure upgrade and refresh, somewhere it is happening. The entire stack being refreshed and upgraded, somewhere it is happening in terms of network being upgraded, upgraded and being refreshed. So because in today's world, uh, you know, when we talk about all of this infrastructure, network, software, everything can be defined as a code. Like infrastructure can be defined as a code. Similarly, network can be defined as a code. And software is obviously defined as a code. So, you know, there's some interesting play which is which we are seeing in 
in Asia Pacific across the various aspects of cloud adoption, you know, um, and various business models. Cloud adoption is not just about the technology; it is also about business model adoption. And I'll possibly talk about that later. But uh, you know, there is quite a lot of uh, interesting work which is happening across Asia. Thanks, Steve. Some very interesting insights coming from you there. You did tell us about how cloud adoption is about the spend on cloud adoption is about ten percent total in the world globally. Are there any other overarching cloud computing and cloud spending trends, maybe globally or in APAC, that you can tell us more about? Yeah, of course. Uh, if you look at uh, so okay, it's a very interesting thing. If you look at cloud adoption, it's been happening for last fifteen or twenty years. If you look at uh, you know somewhere in North America, uh, the modernization around infrastructure, around network, around uh, in, uh, you know around data centers has happened has been happening over the last ten or fifteen years. Right now, the focus is around application modernization, right, which is around making uh, your application serverless, making your application more containerized, or even having cloud native applications. Right. So that's that's happening. Um, let's say if I look at North America, if I look at Asia, as I said, some market has already started adopting. Maybe about a decade back, uh, some of this infrastructure, data center, network modernization. Uh, you know, um, almost about a decade back. But some countries are, uh, some markets have started their journey maybe four or five years back. And when I look at uh, most uh, essentially around India, Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia, you know, around the various markets here. Uh, we are seeing a various stages of adoption. What we are seeing is uh, both the the infrastructure modernization, the network modernization, which in the data center exists, and the network exists uh, to modernize the network to more modern network like what is called SD WAN and things like that, more secure. What I call is zero trust network, zero trust system. Means because you know moving to cloud also has its consequences of uh, being prone to many kind of cyber threats, cyber crime and things like that. So you have to not just move to cloud, you have to make it secure, you have to make it reliable, and you have to make it what is called a zero trust network. So I, I'm seeing a lot of these kind of uh, motions which is happening pretty much uh, from the cloud adoption across Asia Pacific, across uh, India, Southeast Asia, uh, in terms of various aspects of uh, you know, um, uh, moving to cloud from infrastructure, to data center, to network, to applications. Great, thanks, thanks, Steve. So, are there any inferences that we can draw from these trends so that we can recognize that organizations are moving to be cloud smart now? Great question. Great question. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we have always uh, said, uh, yes, man, that technology for technology's sake uh, is for the needs. But when we are in business. It has to have a business impact, and the business impact uh, technology till so far has erupt, uh, I would say has impacted or, or impacted the business from an efficiency perspective. Now with technologies like artificial intelligence, cloud, IoT, big data, it is actually and models with business models, and I'll talk about the business model. It is impacting the revenue line, which is the top line of the companies. And when I see the trends uh, from being cloud smart, you know, if you look at if you look at simply uh, Asian Pacific or Southeast Asia or India, they, you know, they make almost one third or one fifth of the global consumers lives here. Right? If you look at the population itself, uh, you know, around this in, around this region, like right, around Asia. It is. It has got more than half of the world's population. Right. Two of the biggest uh, countries are here, from a purely population perspective, from a consumer spend perspective. Now, given that, there is a lot of innovation which is happening, not just from e-commerce. What I call is now the next generation the experience commerce. A lot of lot of things are happening on the supply chain, especially given the global situation on supply chain. How can I make my supply chain more efficient? How can I make my last mile more efficient? So what is called direct to consumer. A lot of those kind of movements is happening from a business model perspective. That's number one. Number two, as we as, as I said in my initial uh, you know uh, part, that 
cloud is not just about technology adoption. Cloud is also about how can I adopt an agile business model to be able to reach out to my consumer, not through just a different channel, but to provide them a different experience. And you know, last two and a half years, uh, especially during the pandemic, if there is one thing which has done, it has changed behaviors of consumers, customers, employees permanently. And that shift is there to stay. Whether it is a hybrid work or whether it's a big worker or whether it is whichever way you, you want to see, that shift in model, every company has to adapt to. Every organization has to adapt to. How do I cater to a multitude of these factors in the most omni-channel way? Right, whether I'm a B2B company or a B2C or a B2B, B2B, B2C, it doesn't matter which industry I am in. So there's a change in behavior, consumer behavior, organization behavior, which is impacted. And organizations today have to adopt to those changes in behavior, changes in business model, and hence adopt technology to enable some of that. I would say that's broadly what I would say. Organizations which are able to drive their transformation based on this fact that the consumer behavior has changed permanently and have taken proactive measures because there is a direct linkage between a company's performance, between an organization performance and how they engage with their consumers, with their customers and with their employees. And there's been, a, you know, there's been studies done recently which talks about companies which actually change their way of engagement have actually benefited both from a top line growth as well as a bottom line performance to be able to cater and you know adopt new business models. Uh, so Deep, a very interesting point shared by you and why cloud is important and there are many advantages for organizations who've already started their journey on being on cloud or they're looking to be on cloud. So in your view, what are some key focus areas they should keep in mind while choosing an optimal cloud computing strategy and which aspects of business require most cloudification? So, uh, thanks Yasmin for the question, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, the way I look at it, it's a fairly impactful question and it also relates back to my previous uh, answer to your question, uh, you know, technology adoption for technology sake, not keeping the business impact mind is not very useful or sustainable. So I would say from a business perspective, Technology adoption, be it cloud, be it any other technologies, has to have the maximum impact in two aspects of their business. Number one, the consumers and their customers. We talked about, you know, the pandemic has permanently changed consumer behavior. Right, it has also changed employee behavior, how we work, how we get to work, how we, you know, what modes we work, whether it's from home, from office, from travel, or from a staycation, all that is going to has permanently changed mindsets and behaviors. And organizations today are pretty much trying to adapt to this. Period. There was a study done recently, uh, the of, you know, just after the pandemic, which talked about organizations which has adopted, I would say, there's this change this experience, providing better experience to their employees, to their consumers and their customers, to technology platform has gained far more than their teams who have probably closed it up. And why cloud? Because cloud helps to innovate and adopt technology in big sizes, faster, um, I would say in smaller chunks and more agile. Unlike the good old days when we have to do any technology transformation, it would take three to four years uh, from start to finish to uh, to actually change anything. Right? By the time you change, your business reality possibly would have changed. Cloud is far more agile, thumb based, uh, which helps it, you know, give an impact to the business, uh, uh, you know, more in let's say more on immediate terms. So that's that's that broadly it is. And if you ask me, to be cloud smart is to focus with you which will impact your business the maximum. Obviously, it's your customers which, which will impact your business the maximum. And second is your talent. More than any your capital or any other assets. 
profitable asset. So if organization chooses to improve the experiences around these two parameters by adopting technology, by adopting cloud, they will get the maximum benefits. And that's what I would call as being cloud smart. Thanks, Deep. Some great thoughts again. I think, yes, it's very important to keep both the most important stakeholders in mind, your consumers and customers on one side and your employees on the second side. When it comes to cloud adoption, that is where you'll reap maximum benefits, affect top line and bottom line. Uh, let's move on to something which has become really popular in the recent years, which is hybrid cloud. Uh, what are some dominating trends when it comes to hybrid cloud adoption, especially in the APAC region, Deep? Yeah. So, we have to look at uh, the factors of decision and tactics now uh, in, in Asia. Number one, uh, obviously, if we, you know, at the, if we read headlines every day, it is about data privacy, it is about data residency, it is about data security. Right? These have become, as companies, organizations, nations move towards more, more towards cloud more towards cloud adoption, securing, securing your citizens' data, securing your consumers' data, securing your employee data, securing your, you know, population, uh, you know, I would say, kind of index. At the same point of time, financial transaction. And uh, how do I secure this? How do I ensure that Whatever we put in the cloud, be it in a public cloud, private cloud, private cloud, has no to no risk. And that's where, where the world is evolving to what is called zero trust networks or zero trust systems. Means if there's a completely you know secured system, interoperable, but be able to engage various stakeholders in, I would say, in, in, in different fashion. So what happens is that from an organization perspective, yes, man, why organization adopt hybrid cloud is to keep these considerations in mind. As I said, data sovereignty, data privacy, data security, and financial transaction security. Now, what you do is on a hybrid cloud is, let's say, the regulated industries. If I'm in utility, if I'm in financial services, if it's banking, insurance, these kind of industries would want to, you know, they're because they're heavily regulated, they're heavily governed, they would be the first one to adopt a hybrid cloud environment. Even larger organizations, large enterprises, which has a lot of consumers, a lot of customers, a lot of suppliers, I would want to protect those in a more secure environment. Right, and which where I can build a zero trust network. So that's what is leading to the growth of hybrid cloud. I would say it is not just about hybrid cloud. I, I put it in three terms. I put it a hybrid cloud, sovereign cloud, and industry cloud. The reason I say this is hybrid cloud means am I putting in a private cloud or a public cloud? Am I putting it in an on-prem or a big combination of on-prem, private cloud, and public cloud? So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is about the data residency, about the data regulation law, laws. Let's say, you know, every country is coming up with the data regulation laws. Let's say if it's in Vietnam, if it's in Indonesia, India is in pretty advanced stages, you know, central banks in every country has come up with the data regulation law. So that's what makes it that data residency has to be there. So that is, that, that is called sovereign cloud. And the third dimension to this entire cloud adoption is what is called industry cloud. Let's say every industry will have their own way of uh, managing uh, the, the data security and the security of, of the various uh, you know players in the ecosystem. Let's say if I look at pharmaceuticals, it is called GXP compliance. If I look at healthcare system, it is, it is called HIPAA compliance. If I, you know, we already know in every, every country, central bank has very strict, uh, all central banks, have very strict regulations about data about data residency of financial transactions. So if you look at insurance industry, like uh, you know, like in India, you have IRDS. Similarly, you have insurance regulated in most markets where data security is going to be important and data standard based. 
So I would summarize that into hybrid cloud and industrial cloud, which is the future and which is where uh, the world is moving towards. Thanks, Deep. Thanks for sharing and tell, letting us know how important you know uh, hybrid cloud is along with industry and sovereign cloud. I think that's going to be very important for organizations moving forward. So finally, the last question that I have for you, Deep, is uh, as we are moving into 2023, uh, what is the future outlook on how organizations will move from being cloud first to cloud smart? And what should tech leaders expect most to change in the cloud? Yeah. So I would answer this in two parts. Right. One is a which about the cloud adoption, and second is what exists beyond the cloud. So I would like to quote uh, one of the uh, one of the professors and a founder of a of a major major company uh, called Dr. Ali Gurci, who is a founder, who is a professor in Delhi and the founder of Delhi. He calls it the sky beyond the cloud. And what it means to if you see, and I'm starting with a big picture, then I'll come to your photo picture. Uh, what has happened in the cloud world with so many public cloud coming up, right? You have the four major public cloud players, and every, every uh, like you have few players in Asia uh, who are fairly large players in this part of the world, and in some of the emerging markets, um, you know, especially based out of China, and you have a few other cloud players which are coming out, hyperscale public cloud players. Now, what's happening is that if you put yourself in the customer queue, no customer is putting all their bets with one with one player. So they're always, you know, especially whether it is, you know, any computer or any customer, they're, they're uh, at the enterprise level, they're actually spreading their bets across multiple cloud providers. Now, which is good from a, uh, which is good from a, uh, I would say, from a risk mitigation strategy so that you know you don't get uh, you know there's no one single major player uh, but what happens is that interoperability of, of the various clouds becomes a major major problem your application interoperability your data interoperability it's like uh, you know it's like an interconnected telecom between the various service providers and it is happening at multiple levels. It's not just at the data level, it's at the application level, it's at the data level, it's at the network level, it's at the user level. So, what we see as said coming beyond 2023 and beyond is interoperability of you know, multiple cloud players, public cloud players, is going to be a big thing. Which many major, uh, uh, I would say, economies, industries are today and there's a lot of innovation which is happening there. The second aspect are for players like us who provide a multi-cloud basically help customers manage their you know, complexity of having multiple clouds right and provide that as a service. So that's that is going to that is going to grow even further. Right. Multi-cloud Cloud interoperability are the two themes which is going to come up very much beyond 2023. Now, coming to 2023, in terms of the organization priorities, given the headwinds uh, which we have seen in the Western world, thankfully, in uh, Southeast Asia, in, in this part of the world, we have not yet seen that headwind because uh, there is enough domestic demand, there is enough, um, I would say, opportunities for companies to service consumers, customers in the local markets and while managing the influential impressions, the public change and all of that. So what we are seeing in, in, this, uh, in this part of the world are people are actually going to the second stage. The first stage, as I said, was the, uh, you know, the modernization of the infrastructure of the digital infrastructure of the network and so on. Now, in the second stage, what they are doing, they are modernizing their application. They are making their application serverless. They are making their application cloud native. So that's the second stage. And they are making their application more secure from all kinds of cyber security, like putting into a type of security. So that's that's a second stage from a technology perspective. Finally, from a business perspective, where I look at it is the focus is going to continue to remain. And 
you know, uh, in terms of uh, focusing on consumer, focusing on customers, getting insights, get being able to utilize the data which I'm gathering in a far more intelligent fashion, right? And and changing their business models around that. Right. So these, I would say, would continue to remain a same sense uh, in this region. Thank you, Deep. Those are some great insights and on what the future of cloud would look like. Uh, no matter what kind of changes are happening across the world, it's a positive sign to see that cloud will remain to be a high priority for organizations who want to remain in a secure system, have their data, you know, served right, uh, you know, analyzed in the right manner, and have a zero trust system or platform, as you said. So that's very, very interesting to know. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. We look forward to interacting more with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwin. Thank you. And here's to the journey of organizations who are trying to move from cloud first to cloud smart and becoming smarter organizations. Thank you everyone for watching this series. Take care and bye-bye.